Ahoy, aspiring sea wolves! Today we're setting sail in the German Albatross class. These sleek missile-wielding wonders were a class of ships named after the majestic birds of prey. Crafted by German shipbuilders Lussen and Kroger, these vessels were designed to replace the Type 141 Sea Adler class. Our story kicks off in the 1960s, the design and development of the Albatross class reaching its final stages in 1966. Fast forward to 1972 and the order was cast and the shipbuilders danced their magic. The first units were launched and commissioned in 1976 with a composite hull designed by Lawson. These beauties weighed in at 398 tons and stretched 57.8 meters long, 7.8 meters wide and dipped 2.6 meters. Powered by four MTU diesels churning out 17,700 horsepower, they sliced through the waves at a nifty 40 knots. Two Otto Malara 76mm guns played both sides of the anti-surface anti-air game, placed like Sentinels fore and aft. They were backed by four MM38 Exocet missiles, strategically nestled in dual mounts, with two torpedo tubes that fired SEAL wire-guided torpedoes. Equipped with SMA-3 RM-20 navigational radars and WM-27 surface search and fire control radars, they were designed to search for and intercept a variety of threats. Hot dog decoy launchers and chaff launchers were fitted to offer protection from reply missiles. In War Thunder, the Albatross class is missing its main feature, the missiles, removing the majority of its killing power and purpose. As such, the class is a mixed bag, each element of its design dictating certain playstyles. It's a swift contender, its high speed is a strategic advantage, enabling it to rush and secure capture points, or strategic positions. To play the ship optimally, you need to use it in a supporting role using the 76mm cannons to shred enemy ships while benefiting from the protection of your allies. If you're solo, retreat towards friendly forces is a basic survival tactic, trying to fight targets that you outrange and supporting allies to contain larger threats. The vessel has a decent ammunition load, totally nullified by an 80 round ready rack that takes an eternity to reload and this process stops if you shoot. While formidable in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, the appearance of other enemy vessels will often spell doom. The torpedoes, though potent, are rear launched and require space and time to turn on their attack heading and so are rarely useful in a close range ambush. This pushes the vessel further into the long range support role. A major drawback of the vessel is its fragile construction, being lightly armoured and armed, the Albatross can quickly find itself overwhelmed in the face of enemy firepower. It excels in the supporting role and it should leverage its potent 76mm cannons. In 2005, the German Navy bid farewell to this class, passing the torch to Tunisia and Ghana. Tunisia inherited six boats, minus their Exocet missiles, while Ghana secured two vessels in 2010 for 28 million euro. G'day guys, welcome back to the Waves of War Thunder. Today we're grinding out the last vessels in the German coastal tree, and I'm also working on the latest coastal task, which is to get 20,000 damage with a gun bigger than 75 millimeter which means the 76mm is the perfect gun for the job. Fast firing, decent damage. On a coastal vessel at 3.7, it's gonna do work to the smaller vessels. In the initial stages of this engagement, we want to neutralize the coastal waters. There's a cyclone there, it's our biggest threat. We're gonna make sure we set fire to the bridge, the radio room, the fore turret, and that should destroy his ammunition. They're a little bit tender if you set a fire in the bridge. And there we go, we've had to get a kill. Fairly easy kill there with the Bassard. We are very fragile though. We either explode with large rounds or we get shot to death. The Bussard is the, uh, the vent version of this vehicle and so it's got secondary pintle mount gunners as well which does give a little bit of extra help at close range but they shouldn't be relied on. Oh, we've got a missile inbound. It's a shame I can't deploy the chaff. USS Douglas firing his anti-ship missiles. Second one inbound, need to get him before that missile tracks us. The Rim 24, very potent anti-ship missile and that would instantly destroy us. All right, so we've cleared the coastal waters. You want to, oh, there's an extra guy here. You want to leverage the power of the 76 millimeter gun 
by keeping your distance from your foes that have smaller calibers and whacking the ones that can fight you. And then we're going to use our speed to contest capture zones. It's not as fast as a lot of coastal vessels, but for its size, it is quite large. It is a shame that we have the missile tubes there that are not functioning because they do waste a lot of space on the deck and while they're not dangerous, like you won't die. Oh, we've got another target here, PT. PT PTF7. While they won't kill you, they won't detonate because they have no missiles in them, they do extend the length of the ship and therefore make you more vulnerable when you're broadside. If this ship was missing those and was a little bit shorter, it would be quite a maneuverable little boat. We're going to head to Bravo Point. No doubt Mr. PT, we've got the V990. Need to lead more, but he's running into cover. We've got one hit on him. Now my major concern here, oh, we've got another, another coastal vessel. That's a friendly, friendly albatross. Okay, so yeah, coastal supremacy at the moment. Now, in this map, it tends to be a decent spread of the battle rating, so we may run into destroyers that have already pushed the capture zones. But for now, it looks like the Charlie Point is clear and the other Albatross is watching us here. Got a G5 here, can take the aggro if there's anyone around the corner. But in the early stages of this battle, we're doing fairly well despite the capture zone deficiency. Got a Sumner inbound. We have the firepower to take out turrets and that sort of thing, but the, the torpedoes are very hard to get on target at the last moment. They're not the sort of torpedo that you launch in a pad ink and get a kill. They take about 5 to 10 seconds to turn around on the attack heading, and that requires planning. But they have a very long range and a decent-sized warhead of 250 k uh, kilos. So we'll capture up the Bravo point and try and give our ready rack some time to reload because they run out of ammo very quickly and despite having so much on the ship you rarely get a chance to use it all so it's the opposite problem than what the Spaviero has this boat has ammunition it just can't ever get it up into the gun to be used and it's kind of disappointing because the Soviet 57mm is magazine fed so once it runs out of its I think it's 2,000 rounds. You just slot another one in over 10 seconds. It's a guy that I know there, Mr. Bruce. Stay away from him, because he will clap us with his accurate fire. <laughs> We're playing the coastal game today. Got an enemy coming inbound. We'll work our way over to Charlie Point to stop him from taking that. He's got artillery coming in on him. Coast is clear. I think there might be a destroyer about to push through Bravo, so we need to watch our stern. USS Wilkinson's taken down that Sumner. Which is good. It looks like Charlie Point is secure. And I think the coastal game's pretty much wrapped up. Got an aircraft inbound. Calling him out as a threat. Heinkel 111. You can do a double call now for air targets. So what I like to do is let them know there is an air target up. And that gives its the bearing and the height and then you call in what it is with the T17 and then if people get killed by the airstrike it's not your fault that they were ignorant to two radio commands Wilkinson is on a kill streak taking down two destroyers in a short amount of time this Heinkel 111 is easy target for the 76mm Otto This is the compact version, the earliest version of the Otto Malara. 
would like to see the later versions. Super Rapid, I think it's called. This one. Whoop, we've run aground, dreaming about more modern weaponry. <laughs> now, the effective range of the 76 is about 8 to 9 kilometers, but it is capable of firing further. Despite having the radar rangefinder, it's still pretty hard to hit targets at that range. But reserved here, just, well, we've got a, <laughs> we've got a Fletcher here. Is it a Fletcher? No, it's a Farragut. It's dangerous. He's got oddballs as decal on the side. We're going to launch one of these torpedoes, but I'll show you what I mean. I'm not locking our lo luck. We've lost the bridge. But we're doing a fair amount. Are we going to get torpedoed to death? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey. It's entertaining, right? And see, our torpedo was still only just turned around. Nowhere near where we needed it to be. Airstrike time. Let's try a bomb toss. No, but he's underway. It's going to miss. But bad luck. Oh, target of opportunity. Stuka. And it's been ages since I've used a German 30 mil, so bear with me. My accuracy is about to be terrible, I think. Yep, this Stuka's is going to shoot us to death with his pea shooter. There we go. We clipped him with one, maybe two, three, four, five. Yeah, we go. It's enough. <laughs> Easy does it on the landing. And we J out. There's an SKR I want to kill. Where is he? There he is. Disable him quick. Get in his turn. Take out that 76. And if he stays still, he won't be able to maneuver. He won't have enough speed. Fire a torpedo. Thinking he could just sit in the spawn and spawn kill all my allies. He's just hit the accelerator, but it's too late. All right, I'm satisfied now. So coastal gameplay is not too bad in the way of RP rewards. You just need to do lots of damage and stay active. This is a terrible map for coastal, especially against destroyers, because the, the low cover doesn't give you any opportunity to hide from their rangefinders. Once they target you, they generally can't lose sight of you. So I think this might be a short lifespan, depending on how many coastals spawn in first. Fairly full battle. And like in the last match, we want to coastal clean. And then try and damage any destroyers, but like I said, they can they can whack us from now. As soon as they see us, they'll start shooting at us. Got something picked up on the radar. Don't know what it is. We'll just shoot at it anyway. It's a Douglas. Another missile boat. I think that's our friend from the last game. Soviet bear in the archer is going to take the aggro for us. He'll be the first one sighted, not us. Hoping the camouflage hides us. Douglas is dropping smoke. He's lost his bridge already. Fairly easy kill there. It's pretty hard in the Douglas to rush a capture point and try and neutralize all the coastal threats at that battle rating with a single 76mm without wasting your two anti-ship missiles. Douglas's work best in a squad. Minimum two. Best is three. And have backups. <laughs> or we just played an e naval EC. Those 40 mil Bofors are just shredding our vessel. Turning into the fire to try and minimize the amount of broadside shown. Got a cyclone here. Same as last time, we want to add uh, attack the gun the radio room and the bridge. Set, if we can set a fire, they tend to explode because the ammunition is above deck. Just above the bridge. Got that fire set. Got a riverboat here. Oh, I just can't get over that. Got a, a destroyer in the background. Oh, I got slapped. 
We'll back it up with a second life. Take the fight to the destroyers. That would have been the perfect angle to fire an anti-ship missile at him. The 76mm can do a lot of damage to Japanese destroyers with their torpedoes stored above deck. The only downside to the German model is the lack of semi-armor piercing. If I could have the Italian semi-armor piercing shells. I've got another Douglas, that must be the guy's backup. Or he did bring a friend. Oh, that's not a Douglas, that's an Asheville. Got that Farragut out in the background. We'll put some fire, try and take out his four turrets. Not trusting the rangefinder. Ah. Oh. Using the Albatross this time, this one doesn't have the secondary Pintel Mount Gunners, so you have to totally rely on... Ooh, that's a very nice camouflage for the Project 206. You have to rely on your 76s, you don't have the backup. But functionally, they're exactly the same boat. Project 206 is doing what they do best, burting all over the place. Feel sorry for all the little boys that are getting squirted with those 30, 30 millimeter rounds. Lots of them. Okay, so we're going to try and stay back a little bit more this time. This is a better map for long range engagements. That's probably an M802. Yep, it is, judging by the German flag and that heavy coal stack. Try and get those over. Just managing to hit the ship. But we have fairly good velocity, so it is hard to get them over those those obstacles. Yeah, so we'll push forward a little bit more. Try and put some pressure on that guy. Oh, we've got a second one. Is that a second one? Yep, it is. German ship. Now, we're pretty safe from his 20 mils at this range, but the 37... Oh, we just clipped someone going past. The 37, and he's just taken our bridge out. 37 millimeter and the 10 centimeter guns are very strong. And if the player knows how to use them... I've just run aground. Smash the bow on the rocks. Another coastal vessel, but again, I don't think I can shoot over that obstacle. Unless we raise, raise the range finder, try and shoot it over and just glance at its top. But he's very, very low in the water. I hear rockets. Is that rockets? Sounded like rockets. <laughs> Put our attention back to Mr. German over here. Trying to farm the spawn. Don't know why coastal players insist on going into that little dead route there. It's a surefire way to have a very short game, unless that's what your intention is. I tend to only push that way if I'm in a Soviet Corvette with RBUs. And you meet everyone that has the same idea as you, but they don't have the RBU. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to this guy. He's proving to be difficult hiding behind that obstacle there. You can't really penetrate the sides of those ships because they have a very thick hull and the coal bunkers, but you can do a lot to their crew and decks. Very exposed. We'll try and push towards the second one. He's targeting us again. Put some reply shots out to him. Pretty effective damage there. But can we finish it off? I don't think so. Now we're in a pretty sorry state now. 21% crew. Despite not really seeming to take much damage, the crew just get ripped to shreds in this boat. There are only 40 men on board. Try 
trying not to run aground. But we need to buy some time. Try and get my allies to engage that M802 and then I will. Project 206 is really doing what they do best, is spearheading the charge. Clearing out all the smaller vessels. Now he's got to have to help me deal with this M802. A second one spawned in. Still, I can't get the guns over, can I? Yes, we can get him over. Now we just need to shoot. And I'm also running very low on the ready rack. I could just feel it. So you really have to temper your shots. I wish you could just act like an SKR and just open fire until the, the magazines were dry. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And we've been taken out by the M802. Let's see if we can get a revenge torpedo. He's not looking at us, he's looking at our friend that's coming from the other side. Torpedo away. No, now. That's better. Now. He still hasn't seen us. <laughs> Here come the torpedoes, friend. Nice, easy revenge torpedo. So there we go. I oh, managed to get the challenge that I was trying to finish. Make sure to leave a like down below and I'll see you next time.